Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic. I was about to say, yeah, it is Sunday. It's Sunday. I was like, I was like man, what which podcast am I on? Man, that's pretty do... poignant about how everybody's week's been. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> I do one on Monday, one on Sunday. It is. Yeah, yeah, man. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. We got a special guest, man, guy I've been following on his channel for quite a while now, Cody from the Home Theater Hobbyist. Cody, welcome, man. Hey, how you doing? I'm you good, doing, dude. Everybody? Doing real, real good. Glad to have you. And uh, we're going to hang out. We're going to kind of hear a little bit about Cody. We're going to dive into a topic here just a little bit. And we've got a little couple of updates. But first, I want to say a big hi to some folks in the chat. We've got, uh, let's see who's in the house. Chris in the house. K-Man, Fred. Uh, Jed, good to see you. Tristan. Tim, good to see you, brother. Francis. Who else we got? talent what's happening man very cool hope you guys are having an incredible week been a really really busy weekend i'll just share a couple of things that that i had happen over the weekend um had a chance yesterday to film um, a home theater tour up in jacksonville florida about three and a half uh, to four hours from me uh with stereo integrity got some little stereo integrity uh merch he's like nice. i'm gonna he's i'm gonna bring you a gift i said cool, they make man. the smallest subs <laughs> so here's the crazy thing man check out later on go to my youtube channel and go to the community tab and look at a couple of videos that i posted there and one of them is um the owner of stereo integrity he's known for making massive subwoofers so they <laughs> They make some budget friendly subwoofers. I didn't realize that they have some as low as 200 bucks for, I think an 18 inch. And then he's got some really massive ones, which is the homeowner has three stereo integrity, 24 inch subwoofers. So he has two on the front wall and then one as a near field subwoofer. <laughs> so it's insane. He copied Doug. And, no, but no, and I know. I'm just and throwing behind, that out there. And behind his screen, he's got, in addition to the two 24 inch, he also has two 21 inch from, I think, DIY Sound Group, I believe. So crazy, crazy setup. That's going to be a lot of fun. But then after we're done, we go out to um, Nick. He's the owner of Stereo Integrity. And we go out to his car and he's it's all tricked out with Stereo Integrity. So apparently I didn't realize they make car audio stuff as well. Tweeters, um, uh well, they call it components speakers. Yeah. Where they separate the tweeter and the woofer or the tweeter and, and mid range. So he's got those in his setup and in the back, he's got an Audi, like a, a wagon and everything's stealth. You lift up the floor of the, in the trunk and it's got little hydraulics and there's a big, massive 24 inch humongous. Um, I think it's like 1600 watt amplifier going to that sub two massive amplifiers that they make stereo integrity on the sidewalls that are, that are hidden. But the coolest thing, man, is you think, okay, 24 inch requires a massive box, right? Like huge box. There is no box. This thing is stealth. I'm like, what the heck? So he says, look under my car. I look underneath the car and literally legit. The magnet is just hanging out where like the spare tire would be. What? Like it, I'm dead serious, man. Go look at the video. It's crazy. He's, you know, they, they using the world it. as an open baffle. Yeah, literally. It's an open or an infinite baffle subwoofer in a car. I've never seen that done. So the, usually you have a room for that, not yeah, yeah, just the earth, the planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's confidence was, in your subwoofer right it was there. Crazy, man. It was, but dude, it, it hits because his subwoofers are like JTR. They, they hit like sub 10 hertz. So he was playing some tracks that were, uh, I know one of them had 16 hertz. One of them was in single digits. This is insane, man. Yeah. But it's not a really good. But that I was remember a fun when trip. You, when you showed me the pictures, I just, I was kind of yeah. gobsmacked at what, yeah. why? What your truck, his trunk lid must yeah. be like delaminating from the back of his car. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it nuts. Was, that's it was a lot super of SPL. cool, man. It was super, super cool. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so I had a chance to do that. And then I just got an email today, and this will be my last news, and then we'll see what you guys are up to. But check this out. 500 uploads. Congratulations. That, that's, a whole a lot of, that's a whole lot of videos, man. So 500 videos on the channel. Absolutely crazy. Who would have ever thought I'd be doing this full-time, making content? Um, 
But, Isn't that uh, wild? 500 videos. That's in, that's a lot of talking, man. A lot of talking. <laughs> it's a lot of talking. Yeah. A lot of so scripts. Co- so, Cody, what have you been up to, man? What's what's new on in your life and your channel? Oh, man. Tell um, us a little bit about yourself for those that don't know you. Yeah. So, I run the uh, Home Theater Hobbies channel on YouTube, here on YouTube. And um, and I do a lot of speaker reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to get into TVs a little bit more. I've been doing a little bit more um, getting out now that yeah. uh, COVID is... Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Uh, COVID is what it is, right? We're just getting a little yep. bit more comfortable with it, I guess. Yep. Um, so getting out, doing, trying to do some more tours and stuff like that. So I just did a yeah. tour with uh, Audio Advice in Raleigh, right. North Carolina. That was a yeah. lot of fun. Dude, um, if, if so. and I will pop in here for a second. If y'all haven't seen that video, and I told, I emailed Cody, because we hadn't talked in a while, but I emailed him specifically after seeing that video. I said, dude, you did an, a phenomenal job on this. They've got a killer setup there, and you can try headphones. You can, I mean, it's a it's a cool video, so definitely check that out over on his channel. So go ahead, man. Yeah, that no, was, no, that good. was that was a lot of fun to do. I hadn't been there, um, so I was doing a theater tour there in yeah. that area, and um, and I hadn't been there, and that store is just wow. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like you go in there, and like the first room he kind of shows us was like sort of like the room you see in Magnolia uh, Best yeah. Buy. And then all the other rooms are like, you know, a dedicated uh, turntable room. They've got a dedicated two channel room, a smart home setup, three different theater or four different theaters, I guess. Yeah. It's just a really cool store. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And it's just fun getting out and, you know, talking to different people in the industry just about the stuff, you know, because this is the hobby that at least I enjoy. And I think most people watching this video enjoy, too. So it's just fun yeah. getting together, talking about it. For sure, man. Absolutely, yeah. man. Well, definitely glad to have you on the channel. Um yep. Like I said, we've had some interactions through email before, and and uh, so I'm like, man, what well, you have. Right? I've never met Cody. Yeah, yeah, but so, but he's a super cool dude. Got some great content. I love seeing his his videos just continue to get better and better. The more we upload, the more we get out, the more we kind of try to stretch ourselves. The you know, the better content we make. I go back and look at my original videos, and Sean Cannell says it best. He says, "Your first videos are your worst videos," and they were they were trash. Like they're horrible. <laughs> Isn't Lighting. it funny though when you're making them, you think, "Man, this is so awesome," like, and then you look content. back on it and you're thinking, "Oh my god, this yeah. is embarrassing." Yeah. What what was I thinking? Yeah, what was your man? I know the feeling. I know the yeah. feeling. Yeah, I wonder if I'm gonna look back on the videos I do right now and say that in five years, you know? You might. Oh, this is yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, sure. you'll continue to get better. I mean, you know, I look back on some of my old video. My best video, as far as view wise, has 1.1 million views. And it's got horrendous lighting. It's got horrendous um, microphone, you know, audio. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dang, really? <laughs> Why could it be like one of my current videos? Yeah. Um, but you know, Speaking it is what it is, man. Fix mine. Yeah. So we we keep uh keep working on. It. Yeah. Look at there, man. That green screen's uh that's pretty hot right there, man. So <laughs> he'll work on that. So. Let's see. We got a little comment here from Terminator. He says, after jumping up to a larger scope screen and zooming in my projector, I've noticed the flows. Oh, flaws Flaws. in streaming. Yeah, sorry. My vision stinks. My flaws in in streaming now. The audio downgrade was always there, but uh, now I'm noticing the video way more. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. That's today's topic. We're going to talk about like streaming. Um, Where is that right now? Where do we hope it's going to get to? Um, Is it viable for a home theater? And then we're also going to talk about like physical media and then maybe even some alternatives to streaming um, that can still get you some really, really, really great quality. I love this, man. Ivan says, Cody's the Barry White of home theater YouTube, Mm. man. (laughs) He's got that cool voice, dude. I love it. So cool, man. We're going to have some fun today. Still working on M-Wave. Just give you an update there. Still working with brands, trying to get more on. Um, We've got a lot to do. Uh, We still have. Mm-hmm. And what are we less than we're less than two months away we're so almost Ju- a month away yeah so july 22nd just throw this up real quick um if you're interested in coming out we'd love to hang out with you guys july 22nd through the 24th ryan and i um are just inviting a bunch of home theater enthusiasts two channel enthusiasts just to come out let's Long have some banner. fun oh what i hit oh it's Thought it'd be right up there. I mean, I um, love tactical base, but <laughs> I think you were talking about something else. I was, I was. Let's delete that one. That was from last week. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna have a bunch of brands that are there. Um, Sony was just announced, I think 
last week or the mm -hmm. week before last week. Uh, yeah. They're going to bring out some ultra short throw projectors. They're going to bring out possibly some of their TVs and we'll be able to just kind of see, you know, how do they perform and uh, put them side by side with some other projectors and just give yep. you firsthand experience with that. And, and the cool thing about Sony is they welcome the challenge of the yeah. other man manufacturers. And I've heard that even if they don't win or come at not win, but come out on yeah. top or in, whatever most likes in favor, in comparison yeah. favorite that they're taking this as a learning experience. Right. Yeah. And there's things that the Sony does well that the other, other projectors surely can't do. I just had a demo of a yeah. 7,000 that I just sent back last week. So it's, it'll be really cool. And a lot of the manufacturers have that same mindset. Like Martin Logan, mm -hmm. Michael, you and I have talked about this. They're like, bring as many people as you can bring yeah. as many manufacturers as you can get in here. Sure. Bring them all. Absolutely, man. So we're going to have some fun. So we'd love to have you come out. I didn't really do a banner, but I can make one real quick. And this is streaming versus physical media. We'll throw that up there. Man. A AA says, is Sony, does Sony have the throne or is JVC King? That's very <laughs> dependent on yeah, what you're looking see. for, especially on price point. I mean, when you start getting into like GTZ 380 territory, I don't really think that JVC has anything to be able to compete with 12,000 mm -hmm. lumens. I mean, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So depends on what you, what you want and what you're looking for. It's. So it's kind of interesting. Speaking of that, I actually had a conversation with JVC. Oh, it's been probably a couple of years ago, but they were saying that JVC, like their projectors is not like their bread and butter. That's almost no. like extra stuff for them. They, mm -hmm. they really make their money doing simulators like flight, true flight simulators for, for pilots. Mm -hmm. Um, so they can train them and, and their whole focus is like color accuracy, um, detail, definition, clarity, all that stuff. Their number one priority is not brightness. And so there are some brands that, that will make a light cannon, you know, for lack of better words, but a lot of times by doing that, you end up suffering in the black levels, you suffer in the contrast, you suffer, uh, sometimes in that color accuracy. Um, so I don't think that's maybe ever going to be their focus. So, um, but like you said, it depends on your use case scenario. If you've got a light controlled room, like I've got a dedicated theater room, I can get it pitch black in there. Mm -hmm. So I don't need a light cannon. Now, if you've got a room that has a lot of ambient light and you're trying to overcome that, then you're going to need something with a lot of lumens and I might mean, need to go with an ultra short throw or something. Light cannons are still awesome in fully light controlled rooms as long as you're not sacrificing black floor right. for the increase in light. Yeah. So cool stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? All right. I agree. So, let's do it. So streaming versus physical media. So Ryan, I'm gonna go ahead and let you take the lead. What are some Me? initial thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> this is your topic. Oh, I come on. <laughs> He's throwing me under the bus. Streaming versus physical I like media. I like that. This is kind of... This one gets a lot of attention, yeah. but there's more to the equation than I think what people think about. And yes, we could talk, we're going to talk about the media itself, streaming mm -hmm. versus physical media, and streaming highly compressed because the companies want to limit bandwidth, right? Because they want people that have limited <laughs> bandwidth connections to be able to have solid experiences. And there have been some recent breakthroughs with streaming media where compressions gotten a hell of a lot better. The yeah. problem is, is that they've actually taken it the wrong way. Instead of giving us better picture quality, they've just limited bandwidth even further to try and make it more approachable for more people with more connections, guys. Just, yeah. just don't. Let's just... Just hang the people with poor connections out to dry and just make it all better. Yeah. Just kidding. Sort of. But the other thing that people don't really consider is the other parts in your signal chain, right? So I, there's a comment in here. Terminator Juice just posted, my LG OLED does a great job with Netflix and it looks way better than my 1080p Sony projector. Well, something to consider is that every one of these displays, if you don't have a video processor like Lumigen or an NV, Mm -hmm. or if you're doing like tone mapping or excuse me, saturation and stuff through a UB420, something like that for Panasonic, the display itself is doing tone mapping and mm -hmm. all of the displays tone mapping isn't made equal. So just remember that if you're comparing things, you have to take into consideration and into account every piece of the signal chain that is affecting that signal instead of just saying, well, Streaming is 
terrible over here and physical media is awesome over here or streaming is awesome over here and streaming is terrible over here. You just need to consider and remember that multiple things are affecting what you see on the screen. And if yeah. you're not taking the nose into consideration, you may be in for a bad time, not saying you would be. I think Terminator Juice is, is right on the head that his LG is doing better with tone mapping than the Sony projector, more than likely because the Sony projector doesn't know what to do with with uh, HDR signals and is just using HLG or trying its best with any of that stuff. Um, but just things to take to take into consideration instead yeah. of just, ah, streaming sucks in comparison to physical well, media. Which well, it does. A lot of times it does. It does. <laughs> so the hard part is I think there's, it just takes so much bandwidth. And my guess is a lot. I don't think it, it's a technology issue. My guess is it's literally a money issue. It's a financial decision. It's always a money issue. You know, my guess. And if you really think about it, like those of you that are watching this stream right now or watching it on the replay, you're kind of in the minority. I mean, the vast majority of folks don't have a nice home theater. They don't have a nice setup. Um, and so for them, the easy answer, because most TVs nowadays are smart TVs. They come with all the apps. They've got the Netflix. They've got the Hulu. They've got the Disney Plus. they got the Paramount. And so those things make it really easy to bring our entertainment into our homes. And the vast majority of people, they're not pixel peeping. They're not looking at a resolution. They're not... Um, they're not as concerned with that. And so they just like the fact that um, I was talking with somebody the other day. It was kind of interesting. I was watching a video and for some reason, the video came up like all pixelated. And I looked down in the resolution and YouTube had dropped it down to literally, I think it was like 480 resolution. I was like, I thought I was watching like, uh, was that roadblocks or whatever? Roadblocks? Or, or, I can um, tell you don't have young kids. I don't, you mm -hmm. know, is it roadblocks? Roblox, 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 or uh, what's the other Minecraft? I thought I was mm -hmm. like looking at that. It was all pixelated. I'm like, what the heck? But it's because for whatever reason, my internet provider had probably a dip in, you know, the stream and the flow. And it was like, okay, to keep the user experience smooth, we're going to reduce the resolution because we'd rather do that than leave it at 4k or leave it at 1080p and have it pause and then you're buffering and then the user experience is, is kind of limited. So I think that's really kind of where it goes is it's the vast majority of people don't have access to really, you know, nice home theater equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is, is literally it's, it's a convenience factor. And then the amount of money that they would need to spend to be able to provide that for the limited amount of people that are really care about it. It's just not worth it to them business wise. And so, um, I don't know. What are your thoughts, Cody? No, I tend to agree. I mean, as you were sitting there talking, I was thinking to myself right now to do this live stream, I've got Ethernet plugged into my computer, right? Just so I can make sure that I've got plenty of bandwidth, right? Yeah. And I wonder if, you know, when you, well, not even I wonder if you're buying a Roku stick or something like that, you probably don't have Ethernet even connected to that. So you're just having. A lesser experience you know because yeah. the wi-fi in the house um just isn't holding up and personally i'm a fan of physical media um i've done a couple of videos on it right and i believe in it but at the same time i also stream right everybody yeah. does if you want to watch um obi-wan kenobi you got to mm -hmm. stream it you know what i mean yeah. so you got to make yeah. sure you have a good experience there but i think it definitely comes down to the signal chain uh, yeah. the amount of bandwidth you have that's available and um, the good thing about physical media is if you have the disc, you get all the bandwidth you can that your player can output, right? Just get yeah. a decent player and you can just go to town. But again, you do have to invest in disc. So Yeah. Locker007 says, all smart TVs only come with 100 bit megabit NICs versus one gigabit NICs. But I don't think that really matters because even if you're streaming or if you're playing through Plex, I don't think I've ever seen Plex go over 100 megabits per second when I'm streaming even a 4K Blu-ray or a 4K UHD. I don't think I've ever seen it go over that. Usually it's 50, 60, 75, somewhere in there. So I don't think we've reached the limitation of that mm -hmm. quite yet. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I mean, I've got some large files, but I haven't run into any issues yeah. with that yet. 
Yes. Yeah, Chris says Obi Wan's stream has been shaky at times, and he's got Google Fiber, so he's got plenty of bandwidth there. Has probably. anybody noticed with Obi Wan <clears throat> that the intro for the very first episode lip sync was off, or was that just me? Mm, I don't know. Let Must us know in the chat. Me. I haven't seen the the show, but I'm not a big fan of like Star Wars. Sadly, I've never seen. I think I've seen one Star Wars, maybe Empire Strikes Back. Oh my God! I think. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all about to ban me from my own channel? No, I'm not a I'm not a huge <laughs> Star Wars fan. They're yeah. they're cheesy, but I do watch them. Rogue One was yeah. by far my favorite. Yeah, okay. Rogue One was fun. Rogue so AA says uh the stream is good on him, you know, for him. So hmm. oh, might just be your deal. Um Lacker 007, my Plex buffers with UHD Plex streams. There's a lot that can go into that. Um I was having buffering problems with the CPU <laughs> streaming directly from a Synology and it was just because I was CPU bottlenecked. So hardware bottlenecks and other bottlenecks could be causing some problems outside of your TV's Nick, mm. just things to consider. Not saying it's not your TV's Nick, <laughs> just there's a lot of things that go into a signal chain, just like a home theater uh, yeah. that you got to take into consideration. Man, people hating on me because I don't like Obi-Wan and Star Wars. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Obi-Wan, this yeah. this particular series. See, look, I mean, everybody, everybody says Darth Vader's tall. like seven feet tall now. Yeah, that's funny, man. See, I got people unsubscribing, man. I've been trying to get rid of <laughs> Tristan for years, ma'am. About yeah, time. that's and you just realizing that's all you had to say. That's all I had to say. Was, that's I don't all like you had to do. No. Uh, it's just and I don't and for those that are Trekkies, I've I've never seen one Star Trek movie. So like I've seen parts of it, but it's just not my thing. Back on the streaming train, what do you guys think the best streaming player is? Interesting. Um, so for me, I mean, I use for streaming. I mean, most of the time, honestly, streaming for me is about convenience. Um, mm -hmm. It's I'm not going in there to watch a movie at reference level. It's literally I've been editing all day long. Jessica's in bed. You know, it's it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I just need some downtime. So I'll head in the, the theater room. And I'll pull up the PlayStation 5 and I just use that or well, sometimes I'll use that. But I also have a um, NVIDIA Shield Pro. So I'll pull that up mm -hmm. and I'll stream through that. And it again, that's just more convenience. I'm not worried about sound. I'm not worried about picture. I'm just worried about like I just need to relax and get my mind off of stuff. Um, so typically it's with the NVIDIA Shield Pro um, and then sometimes my PS5, just depending on if. Yeah, so I, now that I think about it, I don't use the PS5 very much for streaming. It's mostly the um, NVIDIA Shield. So, mm -hmm. um, But that's the only two that I've ever used other than the Fire Stick TV. I had that a long time ago. I bought a four, Fire Stick TV 4K, um, and then I think I found out it did support Atmos. I was like, what the heck, man? That's not cool. Mm -hmm. So I did ditched that and got the Shield. Cody, what about you? Yeah, so I think it for me right now it's the Apple TV 4K. Um, yeah. the Nvidia Shield Pro is one of the things I need to buy, but I, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, once you have a streaming yeah. thing, do you yeah. really need that many? Because I've I've got several Roku's here. I've got yeah. a few Fire TV sticks or Fire TV 4K. I've got that Cube thing. That thing didn't didn't last very long. I don't know. <laughs> the Fire Stick Cube. Yeah, yeah, the Fire TV Cube thing. The big one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had that and that. Yeah, and I used it, and I plugged it up maybe two months ago, and it just wasn't, it was finicky. I don't know what was going on mm -hmm. with that. So anyways, yeah. but yeah, I would have to say probably the Apple TV. Um, yeah. Has that been pretty solid for you as far as performance? Is it glitchy? I don't know. It's been, it's been rock solid. Um, like I said, I want to try the NVIDIA Shield Pro mm -hmm. um, and Roku. You know, Roku's Roku. They do their thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got a Roku Ultra, and I like it. I haven't had any issues mm -hmm. with that either. So yeah. I think, like I said, if just for casual viewing, like, you know, I, I like streaming media. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. So how does that compare? I will we'll mention this. Terminator Juice says best streaming device is the built-in apps on my OLED. But Apple TV 4K seems to be really good compared to other devices. So and I'm sure a lot of you use, uh, like we don't have a, a TV even in our living room. So I really don't have that experience with the smart apps in your TV other than every once in a while. I'll be in my daughter's bedroom and she'll be flipping through stuff, but um, on her TV. But um, but I think a lot of people probably still use the built-in in their TV, you know, especially when now with ARC, ARC or EARC, 
You're able to send that audio to your receiver, out to your speakers, and you get a pretty good sound, pretty good um, uh, image with that. Mm-hmm. So, but it is going to be limited. You know, you're going to be limited. Um, what's the what's the audio limitation on streaming? Is it like seven point one? No, some of them. Some... You can do Atmos. It dep- so this <clears throat> is something else to consider. And the reason I brought up different different streamers is because manufacturers and the actual content creators will do different things on different platforms. So like Netflix behaves differently on the Apple TV than it does on the Nvidia shield and oh, like it does on the Apple and on the fire stick and the Roku. So there's certain apps that actually will support more channels and different audio codecs on different platforms than they do on others. So the biggest example, and this isn't streaming, but Plex, mm-hmm. right? So Plex, the reason the Nvidia Shield is heavily regarded as one of the best is because it has passed through like no limitations as far as streaming from local libraries from a Synology or hard mm-hmm. drives or whatever through Plex or Kodi. The Apple TV, unless you're using some other side loaded application, which I think <clears throat> Apple got rid of and fixed, so you can't even do that now, you can't do that. So you don't have Atmos support on Apple TVs through Plex. Mm -hmm. And there's other limitations when you consider Netflix or Prime or a multitude of other applications. They don't behave the same way on the different streaming sources. So in my opinion, the best layout, and I've talked about it, you've talked, Michael heard me talk about my disdain for the Apple TV. Like I just hate the Apple TV in the professional industry, but, I do use it and I use it because it has the most polished interface. I hate the remote. So I use my phone mm-hmm. because I don't like the the swipe remote part of it. But for, for streaming applications, the Apple TV to me is the best. It, it's just, it's the most polished. The apps have, they work most of the time. Um, it's got the, all of the Apple stuff through iTunes and Apple TV that the Nvidia shield and other sources don't have. But for Plex and Cody, mm-hmm that's the NVIDIA shield every day of the week. So it yeah. just depends on what I'm doing as to what source I'm going to use, but just something for everybody to consider as far as apps and their capabilities. They vary from platform to platform, yeah. which is a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. So you, you kind of, well, Cody, were you going to say something? Yeah, no, I was trying to, uh, I felt like I read something that was, they were saying that the at most that you stream is actually, it has less bandwidth than Atmos on disc. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they're using I've heard the same bandwidth. thing. Um, yeah. So I wanted to find that from a reputable source before I just yeah. audio that in out general loud. usually is compressed and has less fidelity, even if it supports all of the channels. If you're streaming right. it, it's just a compressed stream, and you're going to have less fidelity in comparison to physical media. Cool. And this is where <clears throat> taking it a step forward further, where Kaleidoscape takes it yeah. up another notch, right? Because mm-hmm. your physical media has a limitation with how much data they can fit on a disc. But Kaleidoscape, they don't have that limitation because there is no physical media. You're just downloading directly from the publishers to your hard drives. And if the publisher had to make any type of compression or anything on the physical media, and they don't want to do that, pushing to your server or your mm-hmm. Terra or whatever you have, um, they don't have to. So you can actually get, and this is what a lot of people talk about, now whether you can tell the difference in what media this is actually being utilized on, I don't know, but this is what people talk about where Kaleidoscape, you don't have, you're not limited by physical media constraints um, like you are in the physical media world because they don't exist. So there's capabilities that the Kaleidoscape can have, just depends on, can you hear it? Is it worth the exorbitant price tag? Um, It's not for everybody, but it's definitely the best. So since we're kind of going down this this direction as well so Mm -hmm. streaming typically we think of um in kind of like a browser whether it's on a tv on a fire stick on an apple 4k and i'm literally kind of watching movie content like downloading continually from a server somewhere netflix a server hulu server or whoever and you're watching that through that but then we've got i still kind of consider like doing a plex server in a way like streaming Mm -hmm. because it's not necessarily physical media, like a disc Um, it's digital media. So maybe that's even 
Maybe there's three categories. Maybe it's streaming versus digital media versus physical media. I don't know. I kind of a lot lump digital media as long as it's a remux in with physical media because they're identical, right? Okay. There's no difference. It's just okay. one that is on sense. a disc right. and one is a picture of that disc. I mean, that's okay. really the only, I'd put them in the same category, but so, it's well, let's, each their own. Let's look at what are some different options that, so if somebody doesn't want streaming, what are some some viable options? Of course, we've got regular Blu-rays. You got mm -hmm. DVD if you, if you like that. Mm -hmm. um, DVDs on a 150-inch diagonal screen look, absolutely horrendous i don't care um, uh, they, with an envy they don't but again well, that's i don't another, have an envy though that's another price limitation yeah, so yeah. It's, oh my gosh they look horrendous man it's it's bad mm -hmm. um so but you've got you know of course blu-ray we've got 4k um mm -hmm. so those are those are good quality very very mm -hmm. nice very good audio um i noticed uh where was it at and it may have already moved Quick question, Ryan. If I were to put a VHS on an NV, would that help me at all? At VHS? <laughs> it would definitely help. Yikes. But I don't know. I don't know how much you're going to be able to save yeah. a VHS. I'm just That's imagining true. taking like Bambi out of the the white plastic VHS from those collector <laughs> ones that our parents bought all of, mm -hmm. and then putting that Disney on. Vault. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. That'd be it. Anybody want to test that? I don't yeah, even have a, v sure. a VCR, so. So some of the alternatives to you. to like physical discs mm -hmm. um, would be um, you know things like you take your disc and because one thing that's difficult if you have a massive collection I just went to a gentleman's house and he has like oh gosh what did he say like thirty thousand CDs and he's got tons of movies and so he's physically ripping all of this content or at least mm -hmm. a lot of the content to a server to a hard drive in like his office. And then that is connected to his home theater and to his bedroom. So he can sync in with that. And so being able to rip that and, and I know there's controversy on, is that legal or whatever? I personally believe, and again, I'm not a lawyer or whatever, but I personally believe if you own the disc, absolutely. If you mm -hmm. want to rip that and put it on a hard drive so that you can have, I thought that was legal. Access, technically it's not because you have to like, you almost have to like bypass the, is it called DRCM? D Y'all tell me. The DRM. Right to manage yeah, it. you got to kind of bypass that just to copy and rip it. So technically, you're bypassing those copyright whatever parameters, safety precautions, whatever. But um, again, I'm of the mindset like I purchased this. Physically, it's mine. I mean, I don't have the rights to the movie, but I physically mm -hmm. own this disc. So if I want to copy it to my computer so I can watch it on my computer or watch it in my theater room, I think that's totally cool. Um, but some ways that you can do that, you can use Plex. Um, so Plex would be something like mine. I have a really simple Plex. Some guys have a really complicated like NAS server and stuff. So mine, Plex can be as simple as you figure out a way to rip, let's say, Jumanji, your physical disk onto a computer. So now you've got that stored as what iso and mkv i think is a, another format mm -hmm. um so there's several ways you can rip it ideally you want to rip it kind of like as a one-to-one -one copy um the last thing you want to do is take a really nice quality digital media and rip it into a lower quality and so now you're kind of like you're basically back to streaming you know quality you're losing resolution in the audio it's compressing it compressing the video you're not getting that true maximum 4k image um, but ripping that to a quality file and then in my setup i've got a um a plex server but the plex server is really my nvidia shield so the nvidia shield i think the latest version of the pro does not have any internal storage the one that no, i doesn't. have the one that i have has a little bit of storage it's not a ton but it's enough storage for me to install plex on the nvidia shield so that is my plex server the actual shield and then i have a hard drive connected to the nvidia shield um and that is the not the server part but that's just where the the media is mm -hmm. um, and so plex the server inside nvidia shield looks at that hard drive and says oh, okay and then i can go through and navigate and create playlists and different things mm -hmm. so you can use like nvidia shield uh, I'm sorry, you can use Plex. You can use, uh, what is another one, Cody? 
Cody. K O D I, I believe yeah. how they spell it. You could do Zidu, which runs their okay. own. So I uh, just got a, a Zidu. Now that's a, its own player. Yep, it is. So I've got Zidu. Um, they've got a new unit um, that they just came out with. So I've in, got that in for review. Um, and you got a Zapity. Zapiti. Come or on, Zipidi. man. Zapiti. Whatever. What the heck? Sound like my parents. Yeah, so Zapiti. Now Zapiti is pretty cool. So Casey. Well, you were talking about physical media, and this is a good changeover, right? If you got yeah. a bunch of physical media, I'll talk about Kaleidoscape physical okay. media policies yeah. when you get through with this one. Okay. Yeah, so Zapiti is cool. Um, Cody, have you had any experience with Zapiti? I have not. I have not, but I keep seeing, hearing everybody talk about it and seeing videos about it. I need to do something about checking so that out. It's pretty interesting. So the folks at Zapiti are overseas, um, and they have a pro they have a couple products. They're players. They're media players. So if you have FLAC files, if you have MKVs, if you have those types of things, they'll they'll read those, and you can play them mm -hmm. on your TV or on your projector. So one thing that Zapiti offers that's pretty cool um, is a NAS server. So I went over and did a home theater tour uh, for a gentleman by the name of Casey. And Casey and his wife are just huge home theater fans. They've got a bunch of media. And he bought a player and he bought the Zapiti NAS. And so the NAS basically is like four or five bays of um hard drives so you have to buy the hard drive separately you install those but what's cool about their nas is you physically can take your 4k disc or blu-ray or dvd or whatever put it in the the player the disc and you don't do anything you don't have to hit start you don't have to hit record you don't have to do anything so pd does all the work you leave go do something come back a little while later i don't know if it takes an hour or two hours or 30 minutes i don't know but um it copies that onto one of those hard drives and then it adds all the, the metadata from that movie um, chapters and all that stuff. And so it's in the Zapiti player now and the Zapiti player then can then access that similar to Netflix. Um, so you have kind of like a very similar structure and searchability and, and, and so forth. Um, so that's cool. The downfall to Zapiti, which is stinking terrible to me, um, is that just recently, probably over the past couple months, I got an email from them and they said, hey, we are no longer allowed to sell a Zapiti NAS in the United States because of those laws that we were talking Man, about. Man, really? Dead serious. Uh... So fortunately, half of my audience, I think just barely over half of my audience are from overseas. And so those of you that are outside the U.S., definitely, I'd, I'd say check into Zapiti. It's a cool, it's not super cheap but it's not super super expensive either mm -hmm. i think the nas is going to run you a couple thousand um and then the players probably i would like imagine 500 one of the big reasons why they're them. having to restrict that is because you can't there's no way to restrict what discs you can put in it so there's no way to say does that person own the disc are they ripping all of their friends discs mm. and that's yeah i would imagine that's the big yeah the big and, and that's i it. mean of course that's the day i'll well, think back in the day when we had cds I mean, we'd make a copy of a CD and say, oh, and your buddy you wanted to download a car, copy. you know, right. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. we always did that. And so I know that there's that that danger of, you know, the pirated software and you sharing your own media collection with somebody else. But again, I'm looking at it from if it's your media and you want to copy that, but the government doesn't see it the same way. So yeah. unfortunately, in the United States, that's not an option, but that definitely is. Um, is something that you can consider if you know how to burn your own disc. Maybe check out Zidu, uh, uh, check out Zapiti. They both have different players, different tiers, and different um, kind of uh, features in yep. each one of the players. So yeah, what, are, what are some other options out there? So the Kaleidoscape, kind of what you were talking about with ripping, uh, there's a feature in the Kaleidoscape that a lot of people don't know about in that you can actually take all of your physical media. So you were talking about DVDs, and unfortunately, we can't go back as far as VHS. Yeah, um, we can't Dang, do that. Cody. But with your DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4K UHD, if you get a Zap, uh, not a Zap, but if yep. you have a Kaleidoscape, if you have a Strato C yep. or a Strato S, Strato S had the built-in. Um, it was a Terra and a Strato C in mm -hmm. one unit, and then there was some stuff before that. But the currents are Strato Cs and Terras. 
If you have a Kaleidoscape, and let's say you have a huge 4K library already, you can okay. actually contact your dealer mm. and they can send you out a player. And this player can read your discs. And all it's doing is it's taking inventory of what disc you put into it. Okay. Then... So it's not copying it or no, anything. No, no, no. It's, no, it's, it's not copying them. Disc. No. Mm -hmm. you're, then you're actually able to get fu full resolution mm -hmm. versions of whatever you have. If you put in a Blu-ray, you get a Blu-ray. If you put in a UHD, you get a UHD mm -hmm. onto Kaleidoscape without paying for it. So you're able to digitize really? your content. Some and reason the I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I thought that you paid like a lesser fee. You to get do that, maybe like if you upgrade. Up so you can actually upgrade your content. Okay. So, so let's say you have a Blu-ray and you want to upgrade to 4K. Okay. The publisher or the publishing house or the studio can decide, hey, uh, we want you to be able to upgrade for X amount of money. And let's say it's some of them that are extraordinarily cheap, like two to five bucks yeah. to upgrade from a Blu-ray or even a DVD to a UHD release. Now, not all of them will do that. Mm -hmm. Some of them will get, they're a lot more expensive. Um, but that's a little known feature of Kaleidoscape that a lot of people don't give it credit for, where if you've got a huge physical media and you're like, oh man, I really want a Kaleidoscape, but then my physical media is useless, then I have to rebuy everything. Well, you don't, nice. you would just have to spend time scanning it into the system sure. and then it's along with the rest of it. And the, the big thing with Kaleidoscape, people always talk about the video quality, but mm. the older I get, the more value I actually see in Kaleidoscape because it just works all the time. Mm. The user interface is phenomenal. I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. Slick. And buying the movies is like collecting Pokemon. It's like, I oh, I'm going <laughs> to buy one bond. I'll just buy all of them. And it's oh. terrible when things go on sale. Like I bought um, the Lord of the Rings extended editions and normally yeah. they're like 40 bucks a movie. Right. I think they were $10. Okay. So you so can get some, on they do all the time, all the time. So it's, people like to give Kaleidoscape a, a hard run and it is expensive. It yeah. is hugely expensive to buy yeah. into. I'm not, I can't sugarcoat that, Yeah. but don't underestimate your source as a critical component of your signal chain. I mean, it's, mm. yeah. and if you don't want to mucks with things and you don't want to deal with running your own NAS and stuff, it's, you got to pay for somebody else to do it for you. And that's what the big money and and i should also point this out and then i'll get off my horse about kaleidoscape kaleidoscape does not get hardly any money from any movie you buy all of the money they generate is from hardware okay. so they may get like a dollar for so every they're, movie they're that you buy they're paying for licensing fees yeah and, everything else they're they're having to give directly back to the studios cool that's where all of that that Crossman agrees with these kaleidoscapes by far the easiest it is and it, it goes back to people on audio science review and stuff like oh i want the dac with the best synad and all of this stuff well if you want the best the best with and want to have the confidence that you're getting the best that's the end game it just depends yeah. on if you sure. can rationalize it or not so i mean cody's making the big bucks so I mean, he's probably got one in every bedroom right <laughs> 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 i know i don't i don't have one either cody so don't, don't feel bad man but cody yeah. how do you do media at your place what are you rocking what are you doing you, well, you okay. said what you're doing, what you're rocking, but how are you doing it? Yeah, mainly physical media. Um, I've got the Panasonic UB820 as my okay. player. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so anything that I actually want to watch more than once, I usually try to buy it. Yeah. Um, picking up stuff, you know, especially around Black Friday deals, you can get a bunch yeah. of stuff for cheap um, or cheaper. And um, And then, you know, if it's just... I am a fan of physical media. I really am. But at the same time, like uh, like you were saying earlier, Michael, there's a lot of convenience in streaming media. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'll still watch stuff on Amazon Prime, you know, because sure. at the end of the oh, day, for like, sure. I don't want to get so caught up in the format yeah. and not enjoy the content. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? And mm -hmm. so it's just like, let me just sit down mm -hmm. and turn my brain off and yeah. not pixel peep too much. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's part of... Are you guys like me where... If it's a TV show or something, you're fine on yeah streaming. But yeah. like, I haven't seen Top Gun because I don't I don't really yeah. like going to the movie theaters because I strongly dislike people yeah. like being around people I don't know. But so I won't watch it yeah. until it comes out on physical media. You're missing out. Yeah. Man. So well, I mm. I get it, but I I'd just rather wait. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you brought up a good point. Certain things. Mm. 
that I consider to be events, I do want to get physical media. I don't want to mess around with streaming. I, yeah. I don't want to have a bad experience, especially my mm-hmm. first time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I guess Top Gun Maverick would probably be one of those. So it's, I it's haven't really done good. it yet, but yeah, it's really good. You, you, that was one of the, I made a video on that, and and the point was it's worth going to see that movie in the theater. Mm. It really is. Now I'm looking forward completely to seeing it in my theater and I think it's going to sound amazing. It's going to look amazing. I'm just too impatient to wait three months for yeah. it to come out. See, know? I'm fine waiting. I've got enough yeah. backlog having a three-year-old yeah. and 11 year old yeah. that I can, I still haven't seen the Batman. I still yeah, haven't you're not, seen. You're not missing anything. It's, okay. Stop it. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. stop. Okay. Uh, so, w- Cody, if you were going to get into it again, <clears throat> if you let's say you were just starting in the hobby, let's say mm-hmm. you were getting serious about it, what direction would you go with with your media? I would probably still go physical media yeah. because you can get the digital copy to go along with it. Are they still um, doing that? Yeah, yeah my son yeah. does that with like he's yeah, got tons yeah, of and then I mean, and he'll if you do it through download. What, movies anywhere, or whatever that'll connect to you know, your Amazon library or wherever. So you can take it and download it on a plane if you Mm -hmm. want to do that. So I'd probably still go physical for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of people talk about shelf space and blah, 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 blah. But I mean, I don't know what else you're going to have in your house. Um, So (laughs) that's kind of where I am. Uh, My wife would beg to differ. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's true. That's true. My wife would too, actually. It's nice having my own little space here. Anyways, um, but yeah, I think I'd go physical media. And like I said, I, I do enjoy streaming, I, you know. Um, but at the same time, there are certain event movies that I want to see mm-hmm. um, on a disc. Um, mm-hmm. And and I guess I'll say this too. I think also, you know, the biggest screen you can find, if it's a projector, go projector. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you have to make compromises, but I think event movies like Top Gun Maverick or even the new Jurassic World that's coming out that might not be as good of a movie. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's definitely worth ponying up for the the disc yeah. and getting all the bits. Yeah. What about you, Michael? What what would you do? So again, I mean, all right. So if I had, all right. So let's put money aside. If money was aside, or it was a lot more affordable, I'd probably go Kaleidoscape. Mm-hmm. And the biggest reason is you guys just got to find a dealer. And uh, that, de- that dealer does he offer youth man deals? He can. All right, maybe we'll, talk. maybe we'll talk after. We'll see. But um, but yeah. So the, you know, Kaleidoscape I think is is super slick for a lot of reasons. I mean, you get the quality audio, you get the quality video. Mm-hmm. One thing I didn't realize for a long time is Kaleidoscape. My understanding, Kaleidoscape Media is actually a higher quality than what you get on a physical disc. Not like, all the time. Or, okay. Not so all the time. Okay. It depends on That's what the studio wants to do. So you, I can't say that it's always that way because it's yeah. not. Okay. It's and I guess my lighting in my room's changing, so you guys are seeing part of my blue, sc- my green screen. So um, th- like I talked about earlier, the nice thing about Kaleidoscape is you're not constrained by physical media, right? Okay. You, you're not. You're the publishing houses of the studios aren't required to fit something onto a disc, right? They they can go over that. They don't have right. to worry about right. compression. A lot of the times, I think it is the same. That doesn't mean that it's always the same. Now, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out which ones are different and which ones are constrained and Mm -hmm. the majority of the ones are going to be, but which ones aren't. The other benefit is there are movies, and I don't have a list in front of me, that never got Blu-ray or UHD releases that did get them on Kaleidoscape, that there's no physical copy of, right? So Kaleidoscape, there are things that you're going to get. Yeah. But again, it's behind a big old paywall. And somebody mm-hmm. asked a question and I'd have to scroll up to get it. How long does a movie take? Yeah. About 10 minutes to download get connection. There, on, a so 4K, a on a 4K okay. movie, it's a 10 to 12 minutes is how mm-hmm. long it takes. That's not bad. No, yeah, go, that's go, on the new ones. Up, that's on the Strato C and the Terra. So the Terra is actually the part that does the downloading, not the Strato C. Strato okay. C is just the player. Okay. Um, the older ones, the Strato S and the going back, those did take longer because they're bandwidth limited. Their NICs that are in them don't have the bandwidth that the new Terra has. Okay. So so are there any movies that you can't get on Classic? Oh, that's a good question. Mm, you can't get the Spears and Munsell demo disc. 
Yeah. I know that for sure. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go look. They've got a pretty like, robust like, library. Like it's, regular movies that come out and hit the thing. All right. So here's another good question too. So what's the time frame on getting a new movie? So let's say um, Top Gun Maverick just came out in the theaters. Mm -hmm. So we know it's going to be a couple months, three months maybe before it hits 4K um, mm -hmm. and Blu-ray. So where does Kaleidoscape fall into that? Does it come before or after the physical media? Usually it's before. Okay. It's usually at least a few weeks, if not a month, before it comes oh, out wow. on physical media. Okay. And it's dependent, again, on the studio. Sure. There's no set yeah. time right. for when it's going to happen. It's gotcha. just totally up to the discretion of the studio. Gotcha. So, that makes sense. There's no set answer for any of this because it's yeah. all studio-driven. Kaleidoscape, everybody thinks it's them driving. It's mm -hmm. the studios. Gotcha. It's not so do you pre-order movies that you want to see? You can. Okay. But why would you? There's no reason to, unless there's a better price. Sometimes they will give you a sales price okay. for pre-order. Like the Batman, I think, was on a sales price, and then it went up. Um, but it's it's all just dependent on what gotcha. they're what they're trying to do. And something else they will do is when a new movie's coming out, like the Batman was coming out, they'll put the entire Batman catalog on sale, like heavy mm. sale. Gotcha. I think the all of the Batmans, including like the Dark Knight and stuff, were ten bucks. For yeah. four eight for four K nice. UHDs, yeah. so it's it's just it's like the Walmart bin of digital media. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think of the Dark Knight and stuff is going in in a Walmart bin. You know, but, you know if that's yeah. if that's what you're you going down. Like, then, oh sure. man, you just you just start binging on all of it. You're like, give it give it all, man. It's all on sale. It's awesome. <laughs> hey Robert, I would encourage you. I haven't seen it in IMAX, but I know our IMAX theater um, is different than our Dolby Cinema. If you've got a Dolby Cinema. I would highly recommend possibly even going back a third time and mm -hmm. just listening to it. And, and I think it's worth it. It's, it's pretty dope. So, um, Hey, Chris, appreciate the $10 super chat, man. Always appreciate your love and support. Um, dude, you're just absolutely just incredible. Appreciate that, man. Uh, here's a, I think a question from Chris. He says with physical media, I love presentation of the case or packaging. Absolutely. My son is a big, um, steel book, fan so a lot of times he won't buy every media on that but he loves that aspect of it he loves the the presentation like you're talking about that steel book cover um i've done that on a couple of videos uh actually like i did on top gun i'm like oh man this will be cool like this is this is just like um it's a moment in history i guess mm -hmm. to me so i'm like man i want to i just think that'd be cool so definitely the presentation does matter to some people Take into the account the latest release, um, limited edition of the Godfather trilogy. I made a dedicated display stand for it. That is so cool. Really? I love, I love seeing how people have displayed their media as part of the decor. Prime example, my home theater tour that I just got back from yesterday um, that's going to go live on Wednesday. I'll be editing Monday, Tuesday, and then it'll go live Wednesday at noon on my channel. That's a stereo integrity uh, home theater. He had up top all of like on the side, left side and right side of his room, kind of like a, uh, cause his ceilings are about eight feet. So he can actually physically reach them because of the, I guess the shelf that he built up there for mm -hmm. all his media is just right on display. And so certain parts he's got like one wall is all steel books facing you. It looked just so cool. Well, I think that's really, guys in Kansas city that do that. And it looks really yeah. cool. So that's definitely neat that Chris, you're able to do that in your home theater and kind of showcase that aspect of it with your physical media. I think Cody, do awful. you do you do anything with your physical media? No, it's just on a shelf. Um, every now and then I'll get a a book or a steel book, but uh, pretty much it's on a shelf. I've got my 4Ks yeah. on one shelf and my Blu-rays just below it. Just so, but I give I, all I'm, my physical media away. You just any, uh, like um, because I don't I don't keep it. I rip it right. Mm -hmm. So I've I've got an 80 terabyte Plex server, and then I've mm -hmm. got Kscape since I'm a dealer. So if anybody's looking for a deal, <laughs> you know where to go. Uh, um, put up your thing over here. Where's yeah. that? But seriously, yeah. I am a yeah. I am a AV dealer, ascendav.net or ascend audio video. So if you guys are need anything or want to check prices on anything, including Kscape or Kaleidoscape, let me know. Um, Terminator asked what I thought was the next best digital media. Definitely Remux or ISO. I mean, direct image of 
of the disc is going to be I, the next best best i've thing. never actually heard of remux i've heard so, of iso and i've heard of mkv remux is it's a it's what happens when you rip the disc instead of keeping it on an ISO, which is effectively an image of the disc, right? Mm -hmm. So it's broken right. up into chapters. Some of the right. publishers or studios will do it different ways where they're in chapters or maybe it's one big block of a movie, depending on how they want to do it. A mux or a remux at the end is <laughs> when you put the disc in, you actually strip the video and audio apart. So they're separated and you save them to files and then you have to remux them and then you put them back together. So mm -hmm. that's why it's called a remux because you reconnect the audio and video or remux them together into an mkv file so it's still an mkv that's what it ends up being at the end okay. but that's typically how you get a your best lossless okay. rip is through a mux and then a remux gotcha. uh, that's what i would say is the best following that probably like those digital codes you get with physical media and then probably hbo max maybe be my do you best think guess. the digital codes do they give you a full resolution yeah that's the problem is some of them I don't are know. hd and some of them are yeah. 4k it just depends i have no idea are they and i, I would never read, like one. what's the quality of that because i mean we know that i mean through streaming and through i mean technically you're still streaming at that point you know so i just wonder yeah. is it still more of a just a convenience than it is a true high fidelity experience i don't know yeah yeah i don't know because i mean anytime i've ever used one of my codes um, actually use it. I was using it on a, like an iPad, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not even, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> more of a convenience factor. Yeah, at that yeah. point. Gotcha. Vamps TV. Thanks so much for the five dollar super chat. Why do you people think Kaleidoscape is forced MSRP? I've seen dealers sell way below it for entry strato six, uh, C I'm sorry, strato C six terabyte local dealers here usually sell it for about 56, a uh, hundred. So Ryan, I can't speak to that. No I comment. No idea. So, yeah, we'll just have to leave it at that. So what ended, up, what ends up happening, and I'll give you guys a little bit of a insight into dealerhood, is that a lot of dealer, a lot of vendors have minimum advertised pricing, right? Where mm -hmm. dealers can't go below that pricing, right? right? That's what they just, advertise publicly, right? Okay. Well, it's what you can actually put on an invoice and stuff. Okay, but it's uh, there. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. We won't go into it any further. So there's that, some shadiness that possibly could go I on. I can't comment on that at okay. all. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, okay, so this was a good question. Somebody asked, uh, and this I think ties in with, with Larry. Somebody asked earlier, number one, what happens if Kaleidoscape goes out of business? And then Larry says, what if something happens to the system? You've lost all your movies. Um, he actually likes having the physical disc. So that brings up a good point. Um, I don't know. What, what is, happens what if you lose this? Well, if you lose the system, they replace it and then you re, you have to re-download it, which is the kind of crappy part. It, mm -hmm. I mean, the same thing would happen with like my, uh, my Plex server. Yeah, sure. If I'm not running RAID or something like that. Yeah. it's There's limitations yeah. in everything. Like when I have physical media, one of my old Huskies who's no longer with us loved the taste of mm -hmm. Blu-ray plastic for yeah. whatever reason. So it's... There's hazards in whatever whatever medium you're going towards. Sure. So what is the price for like a one day? Depends like, on the studio. I mean I mean average. I mean, are we talking thirty bucks? Are we talking uh 25? I think it's if you're not on sale, it's very similar. It's identical to what it is in physical media. Okay. I was told it was a little bit more, but but I don't know. It depends on what the okay. the uh publisher or studio is doing. And cruise you're correct. I mean, you can buy a whole lot of physical movies for the you price can. Of it's not for everybody that you is, can't, it sure. is definitely not but yeah. it's comes down to you're paying for the ease of access mm -hmm. the usability the confidence okay. that you're getting the very best i mean that's right. just what you're paying for yeah here we go aa says watching top gun and dolby cinema is a great lesson to see what our home theater is missing mainly subs under our seats yeah if you got big subs i mean your seats are going to vibrate regardless so um, definitely, you know, the Dolby cinema, they do, uh, utilize some form of tactile transducers in the seats, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. And that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do that. I didn't want to do the 4d. I didn't, I don't want the seat really moving around. I did, but I did want that tactile feeling. I, I was expecting when the jet takes off from the aircraft carrier that I would feel that rumble, 
because in real life you will feel that. I mean, that's some serious, serious sound pressure and, and just an immense experience there being that close to a, a jet. Um, so, but that is one of the holdups of an actual movie theater. I don't think they're tuned for that ultra low frequency. Most of them are not. And that's why I'm telling you go to Dolby cinema because Dolby cinema certainly has a great experience. I didn't walk away going, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on mine, you know, to experience at my own home. I had a really good experience there. It was really, really nice. Yeah. So Cody, you're a good guest, man. He absolutely is, man. We'll have to have him on again. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me know. Cody, what is um, what is your most hated streaming platform? Random question, putting you on the spot. <clears> hmm. <throat> most hated stream. Uh, ooh. So uh, honestly, probably Amazon Prime Video, just because it's so hard to find things. Mm. Um, and then they have ads interspersed in there. Oh, that's it's just, terrible. <laughs> it's so it's more of just the interface and like being able to find a movie. And for I, I just think they need to do a lot better job with their their interface, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And you would think um, they have all the money in the world. They should make that thing just like fly. But Netflix yeah. is the same way. Like it's so hard to find a movie in Netflix. Yeah, it used to be e- cool, easy. But now it's I see the what? same movie like six times. Yeah, what is nice with like say a Fire Stick TV is you've got the voice activation and you can just say, yeah, that's "Hey, true. pull up this movie and play it on Netflix or whatever." And so that's that's definitely cool. Uh, here's a question for you, Ryan. Terminator G says, "Ryan, what's the next best digital option after Cloud Escape?" So like, thought I'm I answered that one. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Plex, what? Remux, and then okay, so Voodoo, and um, then probably okay. HBO Max would be my yeah. guess. Okay. I don't, that's all subjective. I don't have any yeah. data on any of that. I would think like the next step down from that would be something like a Zipedi with a NAS because you don't, any way you don't, that you do you don't it, have, but yeah. Yeah. You don't have to figure out anything. It's just like, okay. Oh, put, like platforms. Yeah, yeah. That would probably be the next step down. I think it'd be the easiest of use because there's going to be a learning curve. You've got to buy a certain disc drive that, you know, can rip movies and then you got to figure out what software to do that i think it's probably more of a learning curve than mm-hmm. you know, cloud escape is like i see the movie bye yeah uh, it's, it's dangerous in, you know it's dangerous <laughs> my wife will look at the charges and be like why did you just spend a hundred dollars like what it's is like, this ah there was a sale sorry right. are you gonna watch that movie yeah probably not but it's there just in case i want to <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool when i pull up everything yes <laughs> starts moving around my flex not, right the flex go. that's right uh, what about see. Michael? What's your most hated streaming platform? Hmm, hated streaming platform. I mean, honestly, maybe I'm disliked. Not, I'm not even a big fan of Netflix because most time I go in there and I browse, there's like just really, really old movies and not a big selection. Doesn't seem like they come out with a lot of stuff all the time. But then they come out with some really nice Netflix originals, you know. And I'm like, yeah, oh, that's cool. So sometimes they hit it out of the park, and then sometimes it's like. Eh. Um, yeah. but I honestly, I don't spend as much time probably as people think I do watching movies, mm-hmm. um, mainly because I'm doing this full time. So I'm making content, um, you know, working with brands, I'm reviewing product. I'm traveling now to do what this. What was the trip. last streamed content you watched? Mm, goodness. What would it have been? Um, the last streamed? Oh, it's probably the, um, Oh my goodness! What is it called? Moon Knight. That was a cool show. Definitely yeah. weird, but it, it was a little crazy. My boss uh, is recommending that to me. It was actually pretty cool. It's definitely really? it's mm-hmm. it's an interesting concept. Just the whole mm-hmm. thing. I won't say anything about it, but um, it definitely goes into some well, kind of some weird stuff, you know, because it's um, I mean, it's talking about gods that come to life and are talking to you and stuff like that. So that gets a little weird, but. The storyline is pretty interesting, you know, with the main character and and his struggle and mm-hmm. and uh, and then by the end you're you're trying to figure it out like, all right, whoa, well, what, what's real? What's going mm-hmm. on? You know, what's what's really happening? And so it's it's, it's a cool story, definitely pretty interesting. And the action is crazy good. Yeah. So in a theater room, and you crank it up, and it it sounds pretty awesome. Cody, what about you? Um, well, I last thing I watched probably I watched uh, the last couple episodes of Obi Wan Kenobi last night. Um, sorry, Michael, but yeah, 
Oh, I don't care. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I I, I do find it. um, I do find it compelling. I think my last one, we're still going through it, is 1883. Yeah. Jed, I've heard heard Hustle was great as well. That's been good. A lot of people said that's been real good. Audio system specialists, those are 15 A's back behind me in my in my showroom. One thing that I um, watched too, another one that was really good is an older flick, but it was The Last Dance with Michael Jordan. That was a cool. Yes, movie. that was, was really, really good. good. And but I'm you, not a I'm not a basketball fan, but I just remember Michael Jordan was massive. I mean, he was the go. He was he still is, but you know when I was in high school, so it was kind of like nostalgia going back and hearing mm-hmm. his story and the challenges and and the triumphs, and that was it was interesting. It was very cool. I think that brings up a good point that when you don't expect a theater experience, yeah. it makes your experience better with streaming yeah. media. Like yeah. you're, what Absolutely. you're talking about with that one with Michael Jordan, I think yeah. that epitomizes yeah. it to the nth yeah. degree. Yeah. That when it's you go the, in expecting like an ESPN style documentary from yeah. something, that's a perfect example of what streaming excels at, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. At least. I would agree. Absolutely, man. I was looking over at comments if there's anything else. Uh, we're right at about an hour, so uh, we truly value you guys' time. I value Cody and Ryan's time, and I know they have families. Cody, do you have young kids? I do. I do. I've got a couple how, boys, how are your four kids? and eight. Oh my goodness, man! It's They've been a been long time. In. Yeah, like, and hey, so they're want they're wanting daddy's attention, yeah, and Ryan's yeah. got young ones, and and She's mine are asleep. a little. Mine are a little bit older now. So uh, one last comment here, and then we'll wrap it up. So Terminator says, Stranger Things, um, season four, crazy good use of Atmos um, to put sounds all around the room, like better than most AAA movies mixes too. Very cool. I've heard some people that really like that series. I watched a little bit of maybe series season one, and then I just never followed you know the rest of it. So, um, But definitely if you're into that. Cody, do you have a YouTube channel? I'm glad you asked. Cody certainly does. Look up Home Theater Hobbyist. I'm going to pull it up here for you. Home Theater Hobbyist. I would love for you guys to go show Cody some love for his time. I agree. um, And effort. Cody would love to do this full time. And one thing that that here's here's the reality, guys. Um, Subscribers do not like I'm about to hit in another couple months, 100,000 subscribers. 100,000 subscribers, I don't get um, a bonus check from anybody by having a number of subscribers. Wouldn't that be cool? It would be nice, but it's not happening. Um, But what it does do is when you watch the videos, um, if you like our content, if you watch our content, um, there's, I mean, let's face it. I mean, you can ask Cody. I mean, I'd be glad to show you guys some of the, the stats on videos, but what we really make on a single video. I mean, unless it's just a killer video and it's getting literally hundreds of thousands of views, it's kind of pennies on the dollar. I mean, it's really not a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to drop Cody's channel over here. I'd love for you guys to show him some love, go over there, subscribe to him. Um, Home theater hobbyist. Cody's got an incredible channel and he would love to grow his channel. Um, and the more, honestly, the more subscribers he has, the easier it is for him to reach out to a brand and say, Hey, I love your product. Um, Anthem or Hey, um, Martin Logan. Um, I'd really like to hear what an electrostat sounds like. And they're more willing to work with you as a content creator and send you a product to review if you do have a following. Mm -hmm. So, um, that would definitely, Oh, I think it, it didn't post to your Facebook page, but I think it posted, did it post over here in the chat? It did. I can okay. see the. Okay, cool. I think it just failed on your, your post or your Facebook yeah, group. It got um, posted. But definitely, man. Yeah, Cody's got some Arendel speakers. Do you uh, still have those? I, I do yeah. still have them. I am trying to decide if I'm going to go ahead and switch. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they, yeah, I'm seriously considering that because I, I did like those. But, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've reviewed one of their subwoofers. A solid subwoofer, man. I was really pleased with it. Yeah, so, yeah. I've got the 1723V, 2V. Yeah. Yeah. So. Not, yeah, I think that's the one I reviewed. Had the dual 15s. Yeah. 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 It's pretty sweet, man. Ryan, have a YouTube channel? I do not. So I don't have a YouTube channel. I am really just here, just here. So I've partnered with Michael when he came up to Kansas City for the home theater tour 
last year, and then he came up for the projector comparison in January, and then we decided to do M-Wave. So I've partnered with him more as a dealer custom integrator, not as a another content, content creator. creator, right? So what I'm trying to do for all of you guys is trying to give you guys avenues, the most cost-effective avenues to be able to get the gear that you guys want instead of buying from big box stores and also impart bits of knowledge. Um, or, and I'm, I don't think I'm in any way, shape, or form above or beyond what any of the other guys, Cody or Michael's here. I'm just enjoy the conversation. But I just want people to have the experiences and the best experiences that they can as, at home. And yeah. I want to be the dealer and custom integrator that I never had when I was getting into this hobby. So that's really why I'm here. So if you guys need anything, feel free to reach out, ascendav.net. You guys can call me. I'll post my um, phone number here in just a moment. But I pride myself on my ability to tell people no when I don't think something's going to benefit them yeah. um, because of my mad VR gig, right? This isn't my only source of income. So it's I have the ability to not worry about, is my family going to eat? And therefore, I can really focus on what is going to give my clients and customers the best bang for the buck. And if something's not going to work out for them, I'll just flat out tell you that. Don't yeah. do that because it's not going to be worth it. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Something. Yeah. And the cool thing, I, another reason why we started this live stream is that I really wanted more interaction with you guys um, to be able to share with my audience, to be able to answer questions, to be able to um, just kind of openly bring on people like Cody and other content creators and and uh, people that I think can bring value to the conversation. And um, and let's just have some fun with it. So mm -hmm. definitely uh, appreciate both of these guys, the wisdom that they bring um, and even just the different perspective. You know, the way I would set up a home theater is going to be different than Cody and different than Ryan. And that's totally OK. But we each have our own um, journey that we've gone on and continuing to go on. And I think that's just been a really, really fun part of uh, my channel is being able to share that love and that passion with you guys. So, um, Cody, Ryan, thanks so much again for yeah, always uh, being with us tonight. It's been a lot of fun. We'll definitely have Cody back on the channel. Show him some love. Visit his channel, Home Theater Hobbyist. And then if you guys are interested, head over to M-Wave, uh, which is MidwestAVExperience.com. We've got a live event that we're going to be doing July 22nd through the 24th. We'd love to have you come out and join us. Just have a, a couple of days, three days of a lot of fun, hearing some really, really cool demos. All the events information is on the website. And um, and even the newsletter I send out pretty much like every two weeks, I send out some updates regarding that. So, well, guys, hope you all have an incredible week. Anything else before we wrap up? Thanks for having uh, me. Fred, if you want a great deal on Kaleidoscape, shoot me a text, look up, and you'll see my phone number. But seriously, cool. if you guys need any gear, let me know. Awesome, man. But I got nothing else. It's always a All pleasure, right, Michael. Cody, pleasure to meet you. It's been fun. All right, guys, y'all have Thanks, a great gents. week.